Uh, let me make sure the video is not in no other speed other than normal. All right. Bada boom, bada bang. All right, y'all. So today's Rotten Mango video is going to be very, very heavy. This is about the Sampung Mall disaster. Uh, the title says Korea's Death Mall. 502 dead and 40 missing inside high-end department store. I, after doing like a quick Google search, um, this this is this is yeah, this is this is this is this tragedy is 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 a lot. So I wanna I want to uh go into this learning. I'm gonna go into this carefully. I would like to go into this well, beginning this video with uh, my heart goes out to all the families and my condolences for those who lost their lives in this tragedy. I would love to learn as much information as possible and hopefully create conversation as what I, you know, usually would like to do with these videos. Um, so let's continue. And I hope um, nothing that I say is seen as like, you know, distasteful or insensitive. I would like to, I, I hope to, you know, keep that a consistent thing. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's, let's move on to this video. Bada bing, bada boo. Mina was shuffling through the children's clothing racks and she feels this little tug on her skirt. Mm -hmm. And she's asking her son, okay, yeah, what is it, sweetie? Do you need something? There's no response. So Mina pulls her eyes away from the clothes and she looks at her son. He's like six years old at this point and his eyes are bulging out of his head. Oh my head. God, the music He off looks petrified. Huh? And she's like, w what's wrong? And this little kid, he's Korean. He says, oh my, we've got to go home right now. Why? What's wrong? Do you have to go potty? Like, I'll, I'll be done in 10 minutes. Can you hold it? No, the Ajushi said that we need to leave right now. Mina looks around. There's definitely nobody near them, and there's definitely not a middle-aged man. All of the employees at this children's clothing store, they're young women. Mm -hmm. So she's confused. What Ajashi are you talking about? Like, I just need to grab a few more things. And Ajashi is an old man. Old middle-aged man. Okay. And he looks up at her again and says, That Ajashi right there told me to leave. And he's pointing into the air. Mina looks, and there is nobody oh she says are you sure you saw an ajashi what did he look like he keeps saying he was bleeding he keeps trying to hug the nice cashier lady what mina didn't leave because she's in this very fancy luxury shopping mall and maybe kids just make up some things maybe he wanted to go to a toy store instead maybe he was bored maybe he wanted to go home and watch tv it just didn't make any sense why there would be a bleeding man in the middle of this store. I mean, this mall is known for, you walk in, oh. very normal to see coats going for $1,000 a coat. Oh, God. Table tea sets going for $8,000, $9,000. Damn. People dressed up to go shopping at this establishment. There Valentino. certainly weren't any oh. middle-aged bleeding ajashis trying to hug cashiers. It's just not that type of place. Mm -hmm. But these were the rumors that would float around Korea even to this day. Children dragging their parents out of this mall, talking about how they saw a bloody man telling them to get out. Um, how they saw bloody people climbing onto workers' backs, trying to almost get on their back like a piggyback ride. There were rumors that children were being warned uh -huh. to stay away from this mall. Oh, Because very soon, over 502 people would be dead and 30 people would go missing inside of these very walls. Hey, bro, I'm gonna be honest, dog. Like, what would y'all, what would y'all do if, like, your kid is like, we need to get, we need to leave. We need to leave now. Like, I don't, I don't know. I would hope, that, I don't know, bro. I really don't know. Cause I'm just thinking of, like, when I talk to my mom, she, she probably, like, thought that I was like, I would, I would be tripping if I said that. She would think I'd be tripping because I'd be, you know, what they say, kids say the darndest things. But if my child is talking about bleeding grown men, my alarm bells probably would ring off because, you know, how like children have very, very vivid imaginations. But I'm kind of on the fence of like children actually like seeing ghosts and shit like that. Like, I honestly, I honestly think like kids have some type of thing where they just see things that adults can't see. I don't know. You know how, like, dogs can see ghosts? Like, I feel like it's something like that. 
But I would, I don't know. That's that's crazy. That's actually crazy because like it's a lot of people who who probably wouldn't be like, oh man, you just talking shit. You just talk like the people that be on the side of the road saying the end is near. Like I look at those, I look at those signs, and I'd be like, yeah, the end is near. I used to be scared, but now I'm just like, mm, God got me and everything. But I don't know, bro. I don't know if I would. I don't know if I'd listen. I really don't know. Let me know which, if y'all would. This is insane. And why kids specifically? Huh. I don't know. As always, full show notes are available at RottenMinglePodcast.com. This is another Korean case. We had multiple Korean researchers assist in gathering of the facts on this one. Mm -hmm. But as always, please let us know if there's anything that we didn't cover or something that got lost in translation. I mean, it's a huge case. So I'm sure it's bound that we're going to have things that we didn't touch up on. But just Mm -hmm. let us know in the comments. Okay. So with that being said, let's get into it. All right. June 29th in South Korea is almost peak summertime. I mean, almost every single person that walked into the Sampung Mall said the same thing that day. Which is, why is it so hot? What? Like, why is it so hot? Summer. A lot of people were coming to the mall to avoid the heat outside. And usually these massive indoor malls, mm. they blast the AC during the summer. You- Bro, I I think I've reached a point where like going to... Sorry, Stephanie. You walk... Um, I, I think I've reached a point where malls are just like a dead zone for me. I, I think it's I think it's after growing up, going to a mall is like pulling teeth now. Like in high school, I used to always love going to the mall. Like the couple malls we went to was uh if you're in like the DMV area, uh we went to Anne Arundel, Tyson's Corner, sometimes St. Charles, all the way down in Waldorf. But we always used to like run back and forth to malls. Like those used to be like the trips in high school and everything. And now it's just like these malls suck. Like they don't have anything. And that's also because I can't really fit clothes that are in malls. But like it's like Damn, bro. I used to have so much fun here just to loiter. You feel that ice cold air smack you on the way in. Not today. The mall was more humid, more hot, clammy. It was so hot. It was difficult to breathe inside of the mall. What the fuck? Oh, did y'all know that um, there's like this thing where uh, stores will have it cold because it makes you want to shop more? I'm guessing like some type of psychology thing. I don't I don't know if that's true, but a hot ass mall. Hell no. It's like the AC was broken. The workers are profusely sweating, oh. apologizing to the customers. Sorry, the AC is broken. I'm, I'm sure it's going to turn back on any second now. Mm. And despite all the heat, about a thousand people were inside that mall when the whole thing came crumbling down nigga everyone had 20 seconds to get out of that mall that's all they got 20 seconds is the length of the happy birthday song in korea if you had 20 seconds to do you think you could go from inside of the changing room inside of a store get out of the store down the hall to the emergency staircase down the stairs to the ground floor let's say you're four stories high three stories fine right and at least a few more steps further to avoid impact could you do that in 20 seconds? No. So Pyeong-ho, he was a magne at his job, which means he was the youngest mm-hmm. in amongst all of his coworkers, mm-hmm. which is why all the colleagues kind of like took it easy on him when he was pouting and whining the whole day. He's like, it's not fair. We work at the restaurant on the fifth floor. The AC's broken. All the other restaurants on this floor are closed. Why are we open? Why are we the only one? On top of that, I mean, do customers really want to eat right now? It's so hot. Mm. So the AC just broke that day. Yeah. All day it had been off. All okay. day? So it's not like ongoing. It's no. Just, it's, it's just that day. That one day. What the hell? So he's in the front keeping himself busy when the head chef runs out from the kitchen. Get out, get out, get out. Pyong was like, oh, okay, shit. I'm not even going to nah, lie. I'm not going to lie. If the, chef, if the chef says get out, then it's time to get out because he knows some things. He playing with knives, fire, raw meat, and whatever the hell is back there. You listen to the chef. You always got to listen to the chef. Look up. He just casually says, okay, give me a second. Like, I just need to finish this up. The chef runs to Pyongho, pushes him on the back and says, you idiot. I said, run. And he looks up and he sees people 
booking it. Mm. Like all the there's like five customers, they're booking it to the emergency stairwell. Yeah, if people no, I'm not gonna lie, cause if people are running, I'm running with them. The amount of times that I've been to homecomings or parties that have gotten shot up saved my ass because I'm watching people run and I'm running the same way they're running. That has saved me so many times, but I'm swear, y'all, this is like a survival thing. If people are running, I would say run with them. Don't run in between them because your ass might get trampled. Safely go the way that they're running to or find the nearest exit, please. There's nothing good that they're running from, which should be obvious, but use that as a as a as like a, a mechanism to get the fuck so he starts jumping over chairs, jumping over tables, trying mm. to join them at that staircase. He has no idea what's going on. He just knows that they're all running. My God. And as he's running, one by one, the lights, the recessed lighting in the ceiling, they're shattering. Oh, hell no. And it's getting darker and darker. And Pyongo would have 20 seconds to make it out alive. Oh, hell no. Jiwon, let's call her Jia, Jia, was another employee at the mall. She worked in the basement level. So she sold um, crystals at one of those like home goods shops. Mm -hmm. And that day she took her break early because it was so hot. I mean, she felt like all day. If she even moved fast, if she even thought fast, she would break out into a full blown sweat. Oh, so she tried to move slowly, reserve this energy. She had to fight every intrusive thought that she had to not just walk out of that store, quit and never look back. That's how hot it was. That's what she I did. takes her break early, and as she's walking back into the store, the manager, Anni, which is like an older sister, right, mm -hmm. starts running towards her, screaming, turn around, run, run. The last thing Gia remembers were these little broken shards of crystal flying at her. What? And she didn't understand what was happening. Just that all the crystals in the shop looked like they had exploded. Gia would have 20 seconds to make it out alive. Oh, my God. 19-year-old Let's call her Sarah. Sarah. Sarah had just graduated from high school. And now she's working at one of these high-end children's clothing shops, basement level of the mall. She wasn't even supposed to be working that day. Her colleague called her and was like, hey, can you switch shifts with me? So she did. She was coming back from her lunch break when she felt something really strange. There was a cold wind. And it felt really nice because she had been sweating in this hot, humid, dank basement floor all day without the AC. But did you just catch on? Well, yeah, why is there a cold wind, right? Exactly. Yeah. She works on level B1, the basement floor. There's no exterior doors that could be open to let in a breeze. Mm -hmm. It was a strong breeze, too. The hell? And the AC wasn't back on. Uh-huh. Sarah would have 20 seconds to make it out alive. Dog, oh my There's God. There's a man. 21. Um, his name is Che Myung Sok, but we're going to call him Michael. He hey. actually started working at the shoe store That's in me. the Tampung department store. Okay. He was studying architecture, but he just needed to make some extra money on the side. And he was on his shift when everything went dark. He didn't even have 20 seconds to run. Nothing registered in him. Mm. It was just lights out, literally, figuratively. When he woke back up, everything was pitch black. He was laying on cold concrete. He's Dog. basically boxed in by concrete. He couldn't move. On the sides of him, there was concrete. Above him, there was concrete. Below him, concrete. He just... Bro, oh my goodness gracious. Like, it, sorry, Stephanie. Had to lay there. Like, bro, I'd, I'm trying to put myself in a situation. Like, what would I... What would, what would you do? Like, what would you do? Like, you have 20 seconds to get out, and you don't even know you have 20 seconds? Like, I'm, I'm sure the survival instinct would kick in like that. This is this is terrifying. In a fetal Fuck. position, having no idea what had just happened. There was no light, no food, no water. He tried to kind of push up against the jagged concrete, but he was worried that any sort of movement would cause the concrete to completely crush him. Mm -hmm. Even the air supply felt stale, dusty, and limited. Oh, The panic starts to kick in. He's like getting claustrophobia. And in any other situation, I think that this would have been terrifying. Mm -hmm. But he started hearing a woman's screams. And she's screaming, save me, save me. He said that he felt kind of happy. What? That he wasn't alone in the dark. Oh. So he starts screaming back, hello? There were now two voices responding back at him. Uh -huh. So one was Lee sung -yeon, a 25-year-old woman that worked in the kitchenware shop, also on the first basement floor. And an ajumani. So that's like an older auntie customer. 
Mm-hmm. So these are a lot of like basement workers, right? Yes. Is Bro, it that's there's a higher fuck. chance of survival. Oh Everyone on floors one through five, unless they were in, um, oh, unless no. they were out of the building, they would die. Oh no! So they were all trapped, just like Michael, the Ajumani, um, the woman. They're all trapped. The Ajumani could barely talk because she was actively being squashed by the concrete, like Fuck. on her chest. Ajumani is the customer. She's an older old, woman, yeah. yeah. I would say maybe like 50s, 60s. And she told them in all these gasp breaths, like, there's a heavy piece of concrete on my chest. I can't talk. So the two, Michael and the other kitchen shop worker, they tried to help her not panic so that she's not going to hyperventilate because there's no way for her, to, for her to even, like, take in a big breath of air. Mm-hmm. So in small breaths, in very, kind of like she's drowning, she tells the others, my daughter turned 30 this year. And there was just this lingering silence. Because it's it's a reminder of everything that was outside. And they don't know what to say to that. Mm-hmm. So they fall silent. Michael feels these tears coming down the sides of his face. And he says, then let's get out alive. Yeah, good shit. And the three promised each other, okay, us three, we're going to get out alive. And then everything went black again. What? Michael and the others, they kept falling asleep, coming to, falling asleep, passing oh out. My I wonder God. if it was the air supply that was cutting them off. Oh. It was hard to even gauge how long they had been in there. Michael asked the others, hello, how long have we been in here? The 25-year-old worker responded, but her voice sounded really weak. I think a day, maybe two, I don't know. It feels like a week. What the fuck? Ajumani, are you okay? Silence. And then they started panicking. Ajumani, you have to wake up. Bro, a day? What the fuck? You gotta wake up. Your daughter just turned 30. Michael would never hear her voice again. Fuck, dude. She was gone, and she would never get to see her daughter turn 31. Not long after, the 25-year-old kitchen worker called out for Michael and said, Michael, Mm -hmm. yeah, I think I'm going to go now. Please tell my family I love them. Michael said that after that, the fear of death had never been so strong. Like he could almost taste it. It gripped his entire being. He said it's very hard to explain. He had never felt anything like that. He was all alone. The two others that had, quote, survived, they were now dead. He felt like it was only a matter of time until he died, but it's a slow, agonizing wait. He started feeling delusional from the anxiety, the hunger, and then all of a sudden, he just felt so thirsty. He didn't even feel scared anymore. It was all he could think about was water, thirst. It's like he was going crazy. Bro, the human body is insane because what the actual fuck? Like how do you how do you go from panic that you're about to die and then just thirsty? I'm I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. Like how I am I oh my Jesus, this has this is t- Right at that time, someone answered his prayers. While he was feeling delirious, water started dripping onto his head. What? He didn't even know if he was dreaming. He genuinely thought, am I hallucinating? Like, you know when you see the lakes at the desert and you keep walking towards it? Mm-hmm. He thought it was that. But he scooted so that the water would drip directly into his mouth instead of his forehead. And he started drinking the disgusting water that was dripping into his mouth. I'm going to be honest. Fuck it. He felt around with his hands in the dark. And there were these few pieces of like dusty. I don't even want to call it like paper. More like cardboard boxes. Mm -hmm. And he grabbed them. Wet them in the water. And he slowly laid there. Ripping it. Shoving it in his mouth. And eating it? Chewing and eating it. He was so desperate to just fill his stomach with anything. That acid was just killing him. Mm. Now, side note, the water that he's drinking and that he's wetting this paper with, it's not fresh water or even tap water. It has been through layers of concrete, dust, rust. And that's if there's no dead bodies on top of it. Oh, fuck. It was very risky water, but he had no choice. And that is what he would do for the next 11 days. 
Dog, how the fuck are they stuck for 11 days, dude? Like, I'm... I, I, I can't even imagine the pain. Like, bro, oh my God, oh my God. That's almost two full weeks. Bro, what the in fuck? In silence, alone in the dark, eating rusty, wet paper. It was dead silent for Michael. He had no idea that on the other side of all these layers and layers of concrete and twisted metal, there were thousands of people okay, good. trying to save him. Okay, good. All okay, 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 good. Jesus Christ. I was about to say, bro, where the fuck is everybody at? Hell had just broken loose. This was happening on a random Tuesday afternoon. There were commuters, office workers, families driving near the mall, out walking on the streets. They hear this crazy, almost bro, deafening what happened? noise. They look to their left. I mean, some of them, it's their right. And this entire shopping mall, one of the most iconic buildings at the time, because it's like this salmon pink color. Everyone knew that Sampung Mall, right? Pancaked. This mall that was... 10, 20 stories tall, now look like a one-story building. What the Pancaked. fuck happened? A pile of rubble. It wasn't even like an avalanche where, you know, which I know those things happen very quickly. But, you know, you watch those videos and you see things are slowly falling and you can't stop it. But it, it comes closer and closer. This was one second the building is standing up tall, totally fine. The next second, it's on the ground. All you see are skies. The first thing on everyone's mind was... North Korea. What? Oh. We are under attack. This is a full-blown war. North Korea is attacking us. So a lot of people are running away from the building because they don't know. Is North Korea going to attack another building? Oh, fuck. But a lot of people were running towards the building to try and help anyone they could. Bro, shout out to all those people who did that. Shout out to all the people who literally just ran into what it seems like is hell. Bro, oh my God. Y'all are humanitarians. And it was like a group of zombies were seen walking out of the mall. Their faces, their hair, their whole body was white. Jesus. Like powder white. Some of them had even patches of bright red blood on them, but the rest of their bodies, powder white. Even their eyelashes were white. It's like someone threw bags of flour at them. There was so much sand, rubble, cement, particles in the air that anyone within an 80 feet radius from the mall was covered in white powder. Mm. Wow. This reminds me of those videos that came out after 9-11. Uh, like, y'all know those videos that like, <clears throat> not the videos where they'd say like all that conspiracy stuff, like the like the found footage and everything is, it's it's so eerie, bro. It's so it's so scary. At this point, breaking news is playing on every single TV station news network. Sampung department store has just collapsed. Mm. There are an estimated 1,000 people inside at the time of the collapse. As of right now, investigators do not know the cause of the attack. There is speculation that this could be the work of a terrorist attack by North Korea. I can understand the thought process. Hundreds of ambulances, fire trucks, they rushed the scene. About 4,000 official personnel. So, I mean, you're talking firefighters, police, soldiers. They start arriving at the scene. They bring in helicopter cranes, heavy machinery, and the whole situation was so tricky. You know what makes me think? You know how, like, we have these uh, these um, these topics, these Rotten Mango videos, and we talk about how the let's say the police or the government is so slow when it comes to like responding to these tragedies like the uh the Saywall ferry incident like we, we were about that is it and correct me if i'm wrong and y'all can say it in the comments um do y'all think the reason why so many people helping was solely because they thought it was a terrorist attack I'm 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 sitting here thinking like thank the lord that all these people are coming to help but in the back of my head which is going to the front of my head is thinking like bro if they didn't think that this was like a north korean attack would there still be that many people there to help I don't know I I'm trying to I'm trying to get that thought out of my head so yeah there's two main issues that the rescuers are confronted with. So the first being that the left and right Bro, edges of this fuck. building have not collapsed. What the fuck happened? It's like someone cut out just 
two edges of a cake and then squash the middle. What the mm. fuck? But the sides are standing and now they're starting to kind of tip each way. So they're going to fall and hit some people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if you're standing in the middle of this mm-hmm. rubble trying to dig out people, this falls. Mm-hmm. I mean, people are going to die. Oh, and they can't even, can they even knock it down? No. Because that will fall on yeah. more Bro, people. Oh my goodness more people. gracious. So at any moment, it's at the risk of collapsing. I mean, it's like a domino waiting to topple over. It looks like a strong gust of wind could take it down. It's dangerous. And the second problem was, even though that we have all of this heavy machinery, right? Mm -hmm. We've got the helicopter, fort cranes. None of it could be used. Yeah, what the fuck is it going to be used for? The experienced rescuers, they point out, if we use this equipment and we're not precise, if there's someone underneath a piece of concrete the machine could easily squash them. Or let's say we're trying to pick up that concrete. We could literally rip someone in half. But at the same time, it's like, what the fuck can you do? Like, you're going to have to make a, you're going to have to make a, a swift, quick decision. Like if you putting this in like two, two options in your hand, like I, I'm thinking we should risk it, but be very, very careful. I would say that's better than just leaving the shit and then just like leaving someone there. You know what I'm saying? Like both, bro, both options are are terrible. Like both options are like, I would not choose these two options, but it's like the lesser of two evils. Like I would never, if I have an, some equipment, I would never want to just leave this shit there that possibly has somebody there. Like I would try and try my hardest to be as precise as I can because the other option is just like, it's, the, I feel I feel like the other option would eat at me more because it's like I could have done something and I didn't do it. You know what I'm saying? I guess like if if I did, like I did something but it fucked up like ah this ah with a crane. We could literally rip their head off. Have you ever played pick up sticks? You know, you get the same size sticks, yes. you throw them, and then you have to take each stick out without moving the other ones. That's what this was a game of. Mm. And the stakes were really high. The rescuer said, I mean, people are going to die if we don't do this right. Yeah. So the only way to save people was to use light machinery and go by hand. Fuck. And just pray that the edges of the building would not collapse in on them. So originally, the morale amongst rescuers was very, very high. I mean, it would be a miracle if anyone survived, but they at least had to try. Had to try. But once they got to work, oh. they said, you know, they noticed so many mannequin parts that were under the rubble. So looking from afar on the street, they could see like arms, legs, and torsos just peeking out from the rubble. That and would fuck me up. But it's like, it's to be expected. It's a shopping mall. That would fuck me but up. But once they lifted layers of concrete. It was people. It was a mannequin. They were people. The night... Before Michael was trapped, security guard Ian was alone doing his rounds. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't nervous. You know, there's cameras everywhere, big, massive gates that are closed at night. Nobody ever tries to break into one of the top department stores in Seoul. But still, it's it's 3 a.m. and the empty building is kind of creepy. All the mannequins are practically glowing under the dim lights. He has to walk from each floor to each floor and like the echo of his footsteps. That's the creepiest part. Jesus. Every step, it sounds like someone is walking behind him. And he's walking through this newly renovated hallway when he hears like this groan. Huh? It sounds like one of those fantasy movies where they have like monsters or dragons that are groaning or hissing. I'm getting the fuck. Excuse me? What? That's the day I lose my job. Oh, my God. And he freezes. What? Okay, there's no alarm sounding. So he can't be a robber. And that's not even like a human noise. It sounded like it was coming from the top floor. Uh Uh-huh. So he speed runs all the way up to the fifth floor. And so earlier I said the building is 10 to 20 stories high, right? Mm -hmm. It's 10 to 20 apartment stories high. But because it's one of those fancy department stores, it's only five levels above ground. But each level, you're talking like crazy, like 30 foot ceilings. So double the regular. Yes, double, triple. So he's running up to the fifth floor and he looks up. He Mm -hmm. sees all these restaurants that are closed. Mm -hmm. And at first glance, everything seems normal. There's no one hiding. There's no shadowy figures, anything like that. And then he sees the moonlight reflecting off the glass of the restaurant. But not just even the moonlight. 
he sees the moon reflecting off. He's like, that is so weird. The moon? And he looks up. There is a giant table-sized hole in the ceiling. How? It looked like someone or something had taken a bite out of the ceiling. What the fuck? This is the night before the collapse. Why is there a hole in the ceiling? You know, I'm just trying to think. I'm not an architect or anything. But, um, why is there a fucking hole in the ceiling? What could possibly, because you know, like, there's things that could go wrong, like the AC breaks, or like a pipe burst, or say, like, you know, like, just, just all, the, like, the generator at the bottom of the thing is probably blown out. This is a big-ass mall. One thing that I wouldn't think would be a hole in the ceiling, unless, like, snow like probably came through the ceiling, but there's no snow on the ground. Why is there a hole in the ceiling? Now, if you ask any Korean person, uh huh, if you had a time machine, what would you do? What was the first thing that you do with a time machine? The first thing I would do with a time machine? Shit, I don't know. I'm not going to say it's going to it's going to make me sad. I'm going to start crying. Never mind. An overwhelming majority of them would answer, I would go and buy up all the land in Gangnam. <laughs> yeah. So 50 years ago, if you purchase land in the city of Gangnam, which is like the Beverly Hills, the Upper East Side of South Korea, you would be part of South Korea's ultra elite today. Uh, let's say let's let's do something kind of like uh, frivolous, I guess. Uh, if I if I would um, go back in time, I would probably buy Bitcoin. Back in like 2010, I guess. That's something that's kind of like not um, not too, too much, I guess. I guess. I don't know. I'm trying to be as light as possible. I don't know. What would y'all do? How would you even know to do that? What, what, would y'all, what would y'all do? Let me know in the comments, please. 50 years ago, Gangnam was not a fun, glamorous place. It was kind of more of a dangerous place. Mm -hmm. Gangnam is south of the Han River in Seoul. And back then, the rich people only lived above the river. Mm -hmm. They never lived below. Anything below was considered not that classy. But somehow, somehow, this somehow. businessman by the name of Lee Chun, this influential oh, rich businessman he worked in the south korean government he had ties to the american cia i'm not gonna lie i'm, I'm i don't want to be rude but like men and their hair is hilarious like i've been like skin bald before and my head don't look that bad if i'm ever to do this thank the lord that my granddaddy and all of them had had afros and everything and my granddaddy had an afro before he uh before he checked out I won't have to worry about that, but like, bro, if it, if it gets that bad, I'm cutting all of it off. I'm going bald. I'm getting a baldini. I'm about to look like common. Like, no, that's oof. He owned a massive construction company. And Sh shout out to him, though, if he ain't do nothing bad. He focused on doubling his business every year, oh. which is insane. <clears throat> to double your business every year, that's crazy. Yeah. He mainly did this by buying up land in underdeveloped, not so desirable areas like Gangnam. And turning it into what it is today. And oh, that's like that's like um that's like buying up like you know them fixer up homes and just fixing them up, I guess, but on a greater scale. And side note, he's not that smart. He's not a real estate whisperer. He was a high up government employee, and he would get word that the government wants to develop Kangnam or this area of Seoul, and he would just go in and buy a ton of land. That's smart. That Most smart. of the time, he would just flip it and sell it back to the government at an inflated price. But he was going in when Gangnam Real Estate was selling for less than $6 a square foot. Mm -hmm. Now, it's about $1,000 a square foot. Fuck. I did some math. That means if you bought an apartment that's about 1,500 square feet, that would have been about $10,000. Today, that same land, that same piece of land, $1.5 million. I do appreciate this, like, side information. As someone who's, like doing like investing and stuff it's kind of interesting and a little bit scary that with the money that you have you can literally multiply it by fives tens or thousands even it kind of makes me it kind of makes me kind of scared because like why why is it why does it feel so easy to flip this money but there's people in the world 
that literally can't even get to the point to be able to flip this money. I don't, it's, it's sad. It, it really is. I'm not going to lie. This is why I always pray every day and just like thank the Lord. And I thank you guys as many times as I can to be able to do stuff like this. But it's just, but like when you think about it, it's like all these rich ass people, dude. The It's crazy how the amount of people who are rich can kind of, maybe, my math, I'm not good at math, but like you could, you could fix a lot of people's problems. Like look at the stimulus shit that happened. That time in COVID, aside from the COVID, a lot of people were were eating and fixed their life. I'm one of those people that actually fixed his life. I, these rich people need to give, bro. These rich motherfuckers need to give up some of that money. And I'm sorry, like you have to. That's why I do like people like Mr. Beast. I pray that he's not like a super villain. Like he's like actually helping people. This is what it looks like. You know what I'm saying? I really hope he's not a super villain. And he's not the Antichrist. I don't think he is. I hope he's not. Mr. Beast, please don't be the Antichrist. But the world would really be a better place if a lot of other if a lot of rich people helped out. Like really helped out. So Lee, with his insider information, he bought over two million square feet in Gangnam back when it was dirt cheap. But he's like, you know what? Why would I sell this land back? I should develop it. I should do something. There's new fancy schools coming into Gangnam. Like some colleges are coming in. We got some private schools coming in. We got all these. So um, Gangnam is kind of known as like the new money area. The old money Koreans actually still live above the river, they say. Mm -hmm. In Gangnam, you've got all like the lawyers, doctors, like the professionals moving in. So he's like, I need to make a department store. Because what do new money... I swear, I swear... Please tell me that this motherfucker, I shouted this motherfucker out. Please tell me that this man did not try and cut costs trying to make this goddamn department store. It's slowly about to come to that point where it's always these businessmen who don't give a fuck about quality. And it's about to come to a point where I'm about to start tripping out because... If this nigga is really trying to cut costs, bro, there's a lot of blood on his hands. Stephanie, you are very good at, like, building stories and building lore about these things. And you be giving me the okie doke sometimes, but I'm catching on. And I'm also halfway through my drink. It's, bro, please tell me he's, bro, please, dude, please residents like they like labels they want to show people they have money so back in the day you know korean stores you go there it's utilitarian you go and you buy what you need i'm gonna make it super aesthetic i want it to be a one-shop stop i want them to come it's a social event they eat dinner there's fancy restaurants there's a fancy supermarket i want everything in there so he gets this construction company called Usung construction Apparently, they're actually really good. Mm -hmm. They've got a very clean re reputation, or relatively clean. A lot of people vouch for their durability. Like, right now, if you see new apartments, it might even say, like, Wusong Constructed, because people really like it. Really? So, Lee tells Wusong, I want a four-story commercial building. They're like, okay. You know what's actually hilarious? Like, new houses nowadays are built so bad. You know how, like, they had those brick houses back in, like, the olden times? Now it's siding. And siding is very, from what I was told, it's cheap. I don't, you know, people be making these paper houses and shit, and shit might fucking fall down. But no, it's just cheaper. And then inflation gonna come in. Oh, you got this cheap house for six hundred thousand dollars. They start drawing out the plans. They start building the building. Mm -hmm. And halfway through. They've got the main foundation up. Lee walks into their office, sits down. You know what? Let's add another floor. What? Make it five. Why? Better number, right? Four is a bad number. Five. Five is good. <sighs> Wusong is looking at him like, are you dumb? You cannot just add another floor. That's not how it works. It's slowly about to be that. It's slowly about to be what exactly what I said. This nigga's going to get too greedy. If you want another floor, we have to start over. We have to bulldoze everything down and start over. Bro, what? If you add another floor without altering the current plans, the building would have way too much weight and stress on the foundation and it's not it's going to be compromised. So Lee gets up and says, "Okay, well then you're fired."
I hate rich niggas, yo. I hate I hate wealthy people. I really do. That eat the rich shit really be like be feeling so good to say. It be feeling so good to say. If it, it be feeling so good to say, why the fuck? Why the fuck? Just build another fucking mall. Just build another mall. Just just build another mall. He goes and he hires a new construction team, one that has a very hard time saying no to him. His own construction team. Oh my god. He acts like he is the construction engineer, the ar architect. If you say no to him, you're fired and potentially blacklisted from the industry. And so they made his ultimate. Who's this nigga, Kanye West? What the fuck? Like, what the hell? The dream come true. His team built the Sampung department store. It would be the second biggest department store in the nation at the time. You proud of that shit too, huh? You proud of it. And it would bring in insane amounts of money. The first year they were open, they were projected to do about 150 million in revenue. That's calculated with inflation. The second year, they doubled. 300 million a year in revenue. What are all these people going to do with this much money? What are people going to do with this much money? I, I, like, I, I really think that these people don't really use their money for good things. I, I honestly think they just store it. I really think they just store it. But if when I come when I when when I get around some real good money, bro, I want to use it for good or just use it to help other people out. What the fuck am I going to do if like what the fuck am I going to do if 150 million? When I become a millionaire, I'm not going to need all that fucking money, dude. I already know what what I want to do. Like bro, like this shit is weird. Like, unless you're, in all honesty, unless you're, like, using it for your family, there's literally no reason to save all that fucking money, bro. Like, I don't. What are you going to do with all this money? You have so much money. Are you really going to use it or are you just going to try and stroke your ego? I just, what the fuck, dude? Sampung department store was built with the intention that you don't have to go anywhere else, okay? Everything's in these two buildings. So there's building A and building B, and they're connected on each mm. floor by these long hallways. But mm -hmm. the hallways are not the width of building A and B. Mm -hmm. So it looks like, you know, kind of uh, from an aerial view, it looks like two squares with a short line in between, like a short stick connecting them. These people be want to make malls and shit where you can literally just make like, you can make something that's more convenient. And not something that fuels a, a shopping addiction if people have it. Like you could build, you could build a highway. You can plant trees. You can make, you can make the place you live in more beautiful. You could donate to charity. You could give money to your family. You can make sure your lineage and your name is very well off, so they don't have to work. You can give your friends some money you can do a lot of other things than building a tall ass shopping mall just because it looks pretty and it gives an aesthetic nigga fuck aesthetic now you don't ever have to leave the building to get to the other one but it's interesting building a was the mall the fifth floor would have all these fancy sit-down restaurants you that looks terrible that looks terrible that looks terrible that looks bad that looks bad. That looks fucking bad. That looks really bad. I'm not, and I'm not an architect, but like, that shit looks bad. There's a bank, stock, neighborhood living facilities, a fitness center, groceries, parking, parking, understand, enlarged part. What the fuck does that mean? Women and junior, men, children, children. And sport, family and wedding section, restaurant. Why is this so much shit? And why is the playground at the top of the building? Why is there two fitness centers? The mechanics is valid. This is this is just this is just greed. I'm looking at greed. I'm just looking at greed, bro. I'm just looking at greed. Meet up with your friends before you go shopping. <sighs> and then the fourth floor, luxury household goods, fancy wine glasses. Third floor, men's clothing. Sec Niggas got a Macy's, a parking garage, a Planet Fitness, women and junior, imports and general. I'm going to be honest, cuz all you need is three floors. 
like a mall I used to frequent or I still frequent is Potomac Potomac City or like uh, no Pentagon City. They have three floors or four. They have like three or four, and that's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. I go into that mall and I'd be overwhelmed as fuck. And also be mad that I got to go up to the Apple store and come down to the true religion. Like, it's a lot. Why do you? You don't need this much shit. You don't need this much shit, bro. And they charge you $3 to park. You don't need this much shit. Build another fucking mall. Simple as that. You don't need everything in one. You literally do not need everything in one. Second floor, women's clothing. First floor, foreign imported goods and cosmetics. Now, there are four basement levels. B2 through B4, they're more for like storage, machine rooms, parking spaces. And B1 is kind of open to the public. It's a mall. So a lot of Korean malls, they have um, supermarkets on the basement mm. level. So you literally run all your errands. This is kind of genius. That's they also much. have cheaper food courts in the basement. That's too so much. So more like food stands. So B1 is open to the public and there's always a lot of customers and workers shuffling in and out of that floor. Now, building B is more commercial real estate. So you got office buildings, you have a gym, but that's about it. Not a lot of foot traffic, not a lot of aesthetics. It looks like just your office plaza. So you wouldn't add other stores in there just to have other foot traffic in there? You just want to stuff everything in building A, huh? I see why she said he's not that smart. That's fucking stupid. Okay, so what's so wrong about it? Here's what's wrong about it. It's too much. The escalators. Most buildings, and I never noticed this until I was researching this, Bro, have y'all seen that video? Okay, just so y'all know, I'm somebody who watched Final Destination movies because for some reason stuff like that fascinates me. There's this one scene in the movie where an escalator collapses. Ever since I saw that, I steer clear of escalators. I really do. Like when I go down escalators, I'm like, I'm like, I get, I get physically dizzy. I, I get so dizzy. Going up is fine, but going down is crazy. And then I saw this video on Twitter of this escalator actually falling down. And this child saved his mom from the escalator. I believe that's what the video was. But my nigga, bro, you know, irrational fears are a thing, but duh. I'd, uh, um. But there's usually two escalators per floor. Mm-hmm. And like two going up, two going down, especially big malls. And I always thought, okay, so it's more people can go up and down the el- escalators, manage the traffic, <sighs> right? And I'm sure that plays a role. But a big reasoning behind it is apparently having two escalators going up and down on either side helps distribute the weight better. Uh, okay. Okay. Well, it's a thing. Okay. Apparently, having two escalators on a floor helps distribute the weight, I mean, it safer. Makes and sense. Lee said, "Actually, no. That's so expensive. I just need one." So he kept putting just one escalator. That's so expensive. But you got twenty-seven things in your fucking mall. <sighs> oh my god! Businessmen are so fucking annoying, dog on each floor in massive buildings especially commercial buildings there are these giant rods in the middle of the open space they're load-bearing columns they're there to hold weight so if you walk in to your local mall you're gonna see these giant round columns it's drywalled it looks pretty but you're like oh why is this here it's blocking my view it's to hold weight like there's no way that you can have this massive room and just have four walls yeah well the original plan was to have 31 inch thick columns It's about two and a half feet thick. And inside, you can't see it because it's covered in drywall, but there's supposed to be 16 steel rods supporting the weight. Mm -hmm. Lee said, let's make the columns less than two feet thick because I don't like big columns. I want to be able to see the merchandise. And why do we need 16 steel rods? Bro, this is not The Sims. You literally have to do... Bro, you have to make sacrifices to do shit like this. You have to spend... It's like people who buy expensive houses and don't have enough money to actually keep up the house. Like, what the fuck are you doing, bro? Let's this isn't GTA. This isn't The Sims. You have to, you literally have to pay so much attention to shit if you have to. Let's do eight. This is a huge deal. The steel rods are what's holding up the weight above it. People take lack of steel rods so seriously. 
Recently in Korea, a apartment building company, they put in less steel rods than they were supposed to. They were exposed for it. And now that building is called Boneless Chicken Apartment Building. <laughs> yeah. There's still a building. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So Boneless Chicken Apartment Building. I think it's up to code, but it's not as good or as much as other builders do. So they're called Boneless Chicken Apartment Building. Because why are you not like steel rods? Seriously? Lee said that he hated the idea of thick columns, so let's cut it down. But that's not the only thing that he skimped out on costs. So this is going to get really complicated, but just like bear with me. It's so important. I got you. I got when you. you have a flat ceiling and a column right up against it, mm -hmm. it's called flat slab construction. Okay. Or at least in Korean, that's what it's called. It looks modern. It's faster to build. It's cheaper. But it's, it's definitely not safer. It can cause something called a punching phenomenon. Imagine you've got a piece of paper and you're holding it down on a pencil. The pencil could easily punch, punch through into the piece of paper. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, if you were to stick another circular piece of paper on the point of the pencil and then stick another paper on top, it's much harder for you to stick through, even though it's just paper. It's mm -hmm. very hard to punch through two layers. That's the drop panel. That's what it's called. So think of it as instead of walking through the mud with sneakers, you're walking through with heels. The difference is massive. Right. Your heels are going to poke into the soil. Right. Yeah. But Lee, rich businessman, owner of a crazy lucrative construction company, says, eh, should be okay. He knew that this was a bad idea. He knew this was dangerous, but it saved him money. So he was all aboard. Why do you want to save so much money? You have a lot of money any goddamn way. Why are you saving so much money, bro? What's the point of saving so much money if you already have so much money? What the fuck are you going to do with this money? You ain't finna build another mall. What the fuck? He said, you know what? It's fine. Columns are strong. But they're not. Are you a column? when you take out half the steel rods. Like are you a column? How do you know? You're not a column. Like half the skeleton of the column is now gone. Yeah, what? But the worst, the biggest hazard of this whole building was the fifth floor it should not have existed the building was not designed to hold the weight of another floor it sounds like ah it's just another floor but that is an additional 25 percent of the overall weight added if not more that is huge at first he told his team it's gonna be for a roller skating rink which honestly why not just build a roller skating rink it would have been a lot safer less traffic not as much furniture but instead, he said, you know what makes more money? Restaurants. Just build a restaurant row. You have so much land. Like, come on. Like, why? I don't understand why people want to put everything in one place. They're not going to see everything. People get overwhelmed. That's like me putting every single one of my videos on this one channel. That's like me putting the gaming videos, the reactions, the challenges, my cooking videos on one channel. I already have 3,000 videos on my fucking channel. I have to diversify it if I want people to watch other videos. Why the fuck are you putting so much shit in one place? You're talking about making money, right? You can literally just own another building on another plot of land. Save money. You could save, well, not save money. You can save lives. One thing that I don't understand, one thing that I don't get, and I'm drunk right now, so, yeah. So, yeah, here's a little rant. One thing that I don't get is that people were talking about, oh, we're going to make profit. We're going to make so much profit putting all this shit here. We're going to use this motherfucker. If you're risking the safety of the people who are spending money, how in the fuck are you going to make said money? You would think the safety of your consumer is probably at the top of the list. The customer is always right. If you're if you're if you're risking the customer's lives, and excuse the the very um the very uh what's the word very um dehumanizing thing, you are risking your money. You can't get no money if there's no customers. 
So you would think the safety of the customers would be top priority. But no, you the, your top priority is having places that the customers can go to. As if like customers don't have shoppers fatigue. They want to go home. They might get bored. They might get overwhelmed that it's so much stuff. I know a lot of people think that the common person is stupid and you think that you can, sorry, you think that you can, um, you know, uh, use psychology to force them to shop. Yeah, you probably could. That doesn't mean they're stupid. A lot of people have a lot of autonomy over themselves. And if they want to go home, they're going to go the fuck home. You know what's more, in my opinion, and I'm not a businessman in this sense, which is probably one of the reasons why I'm not. But in my opinion, um, having a whole plot of land with multiple things can diversify your income or diversify what you're spending. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments down below. I know you guys are smart. You guys are very, very smart. Having everything in one isn't always the best idea. Because there'd be some nobody's gonna spend 17 hours in a fucking mall. At max seven or eight. Nigga, let me be a businessman. I'll be fire. Fuck you mean. I have a business actually. Never mind. <laughs> Restaurants Fuck. are insanely heavy commercial ovens commercial walk-in freezers, yeah. industrial size refrigerators God. lots of water lots of water is heavy yeah since there's going to be multiple kitchens on that floor i mean you're talking ac up there is going to be intense restaurants are also more densely packed than a roller skating rink have you ever have you ever tried to move a frying a frying machine because it kind of is like off and you got to plug this shit back in or do whatever you need to do that bitch is heavy as fuck it's heavy as shit. The entire weight distribution and calculations were going off the walls. You know those big Amazon delivery trucks? Uh-huh. Well, the weight of the fifth floor was about 100 of those delivery trucks. And he put it on top. He put it on top, right? It's on top, right? It's on top. Imagine parking 100 of those on the roof where it should not be. Why the fuck? Why the fuck is this on top? That's just the fifth floor. Are you fucking dumb? That's not. Oh, and he wanted to do heated floors for the fifth floor, which added 2,415 tons of weight. This guy's a fucking idiot. I hope he's in jail. I really hope he's in jail. I really hope he's in jail. You need to be in jail for your greed. A lot of people are slaves to the things that they do. You are a slave to your greed. You should be in jail. Why the fuck are you having restaurants on the fifth motherfucking floor? It's like having raw chicken at the top of a of, of a sheet tray rack. You fucking idiot. Just for heated floors. And on top of that, there was even more. So the roof of the fifth floor on building A were these giant AC cooling towers. They weighed 87 tons each. There's three of them. So the total of that to visualize, imagine sticking two houses on top of the roof of a mall that is already unstable. This is, I mean, this is crazy. Just on top of the roof. Now, here's where things go really wrong on the roof. Bro, I'm about to start. I'm. It's going to be waterworks in this video. And we're already an hour in. Well, this recording, I'm going to stop this at an hour. And it's 30 minutes and I've been stopping a lot. But this is one of those moments. Um, it's about to hit me soon. Because... I really don't like that people's greed can cost a lot of people's lives and these people just sit back and be like, well, fuck it. Like. So firstly, the AC towers on this specific roof is a death wish. The vibrations that the AC creates, it only further destabilizes the building's foundation. That's what causes cracks, vibration, movement. Mm -hmm. And so since the get-go, like opening day of this mall, they could see the red flags. The vibrations and the weight of the heavy AC cooling towers, they were causing water leaks onto the fifth floor. Because the water would leak out of the AC, there would be a crack, and it would flow through. 
What the fuck? But the biggest, biggest atrocity of what they did on that roof. The AZ towers were facing towards a nearby apartment building. All the residents of that apartment building were like, the AZ towers are so loud. We're filing complaints. You've got to do something about it. So they had to move the AC towers to the other side of the roof. Now, to do something like that, what do you do? You have to call in industrial cranes. you got to have a ton of professionals on site and to make sure that it's done safely and securely. It's a pricey relocation. Lee, very wealthy mogul, said, too expensive, get a couple of dollies. This nigga's a mogul? What's the definition of mogul? We going we going to do our googles. What's the definition of mogul? This nigga ain't no goddamn mogul. This nigga is an idiot. He's an idiot. Mogul, an important and powerful person especially in most in picture of media. Oh, that's it. He's just powerful. He ain't got nothing to do with smarts. Nothing to do with smarts. He's not smart. He's just a mogul. No, he's a fucking idiot. Wow. So they just scooped it over. They didn't even scoop it because there's no dollies that can carry that much weight. They basically dragged it. And if you see pictures of that roof from like opening year, there's cracks all over. Wow. And now they move the ACs to the other side. And what do they do? They vibrate and cause even more cracking now to even the other side of the building. Now here's where it gets kind of unexpected. This one. Unexpected? Unexpected. 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 One I wasn't expecting at all. One of the first stores that opened up inside this mall actually contributed to the collapse. A bookstore. Did you know Korean books are even heavier than foreign books because they use a higher portion of stone powder in the paper. Really? A year and a half after opening, the bookstore would be relocated from the second floor of the mall down to the basement because that bookstore was causing so much damage to the building mm. from the sheer weight of the books and the shitty construction. If this had been a well-built building, there wouldn't have been any damage. So they realized yeah. something is happening? Yeah. There were cracks. Like, so these motherfuckers realize. I'm sorry. All over these th- pauses have been so bad. I'm sorry, Stephanie. I'm, I'm so sorry. So these niggas realize that there's a problem. They, they, I mean, shout out to them for realizing that there's a problem. So you relocate this bookstore, but still, like, build another fucking building. In floor. What? There was bending in the floor. There was drooping in the floor. The floor was tilted where the bookstore was. Wow. And this nobody is what, did anything. No. This is what happens when you add too much shit to a fucking mall, dude. This is what happens when you add too much shit to a fuck to a fucking building. The entire building started to lean a little bit. What? And all it would take would be 20 seconds for the entire building to crumble. And literally not a single part of this rescue was easy. End of June in South Korea is typically a very rainy season. The rain was pouring down on the rescue efforts. Oh, I mean, no. in theory, it might have been good since when a building collapses, there's always small fires trapped inside the rubble. You've got open electrical wires. You've okay. got appliances yeah. and poisonous gas. They start to spread, mm-hmm. which, you know, pretty quickly could kill any survivor that's trapped inside that manages to find an air pocket. Mm-hmm. So the rain in theory would have been helpful. But it was just a massive inconvenience. Like the rain was not enough to put out the fires, but it was enough to slow down the rescuers. Firemen had to come in and try to calm any potential flames. And the first 16 hours of rescue efforts, five people were rescued. So there was some progress. And unfortunately, one of the survivors would die on the way to the hospital. Then 24 people who were trapped in the same air pocket were rescued. They were pulled out by rope. Nothing was going smoothly. I mean, they pulled them out, but there were still hundreds and hundreds of people that were unaccounted for. And the rescuers were nonstop sprinting from place to place. They're crawling inside of holes that are already unstable. They're shimmying themselves through the collapsed basement level, squeezing past these broken shards of glass beams, like shining their flashlight into whatever nook and cranny they could find, screaming to see if anyone survived. They would dig holes the size of a kitchen sink and just start crawling in there. I'm just so happy that like all these people were all these people really just put their whole lives aside to save these people. 
just off the strength of that, I am so grateful. Even if it was not that successful, I am so, so grateful. They like put their lives in danger for every second that they were there because they just wanted to save people. A lot of the people in the mall, because it was a Tuesday afternoon, were young moms and children. The family. See, I'm. Oh, oh my God. One thing that will break me is children dying. Because, like, they don't even have. Well, I'm going to say women and children. Women and children dying really just, really just always breaks me. Because, like, the children don't even, didn't even get a chance at life for real. And and it's women because like you know I'm just I'm just I don't know I just I I just I don't know bro this that shit just breaks me bro members of the missing and the victims they all gathered they tried to help random civilians that had no family members in there they were putting their lives on the line real to help save people real retired niggas. doctors grabbed their white coats, and went to local hospitals because Real there niggas. were way too many people coming in. Real niggas. A ton of ajumas, a middle-aged women, they were too old, too frail to dig, but they created these organized groups and they would cook for the thousands of rescuers every single day. But ultimately, the morale for the rescue teams was dying, which sounds bad because, I mean, how can you morale die when there's a chance that others need saving right because but they're working themselves to the edge niggas be tired mentally every single day and all they're getting after the first initial groups of survivors is bad news like that like in all honesty i'm not even i'm not even mad at their morale dying nigga they're working their their hands to death saving they're, all these people are working their hands to death to save people from the shit that this nigga caused. For what reason? For what reason? I'm somebody that does a lot of fuck it missions. But this is a fucked up fuck it mission. Like this seems like a fuck it type of thing to do. Like why are you building this big ass mall? Like there's no reason for this shit. They're just getting bad news. Another body, another body, another body. Ten days had passed, and it's the rule of three. Do you know the rule of three? No. Three minutes without oxygen, three days without water, three weeks without food, and you'll die. It had been ten days. No food, no water, limited oxygen, and potentially injuries on top of all of that. The rescuers thought, okay, maybe it's time to go from rescue to recovery. The faster, the better. July is peak monsoon season. It's only going to get worse. We got to go. People said you could smell rotting corpses even if you were blocks away oh from the Oh, my site. God. They started bringing in the heavy machinery. The chief of police asked all the family members who are still present at that site, come on, we, we got to do one last go before we bring in the machines. Call your loved ones. We can't hear anyone. Maybe we can hear their phone. And so all of them are standing around with their phone, calling their missing loved ones. And they're just trying to listen, but they can't hear a single thing. The U.S. actually would donate these um, sound detectors to help rescuers find the phones underneath. Oh, thank you, The United Korean States. government was already equipped with heat sensors, which is typically used to locate bodies. But the heat sensors, they work with infrared light. And when it rains, the raindrops scatter the infrared. Mm. And it becomes wildly inaccurate. Mm -hmm. 11 days had passed and now rescuers were like okay no one survived so let's bring in the machinery bro just like a i'm gonna be honest dog like there's a lot of things that comes with like you know rescuing people because you kind of like put um because you kind of put, like, somebody else's lives in your hands because you're rescuing somebody. So, like, you have the responsibility to, you know, make sure they're good, make sure they're okay, and, they're, like, get them back to their families. And, like, if you can't find the person, the amount of guilt that 
falls on you is massive. It's fucking massive. And I understand the amount of guilt. But at the same time, it's like, bro, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. And knowing that, like, it's a, you know, this in Korea, there's like a, a blaming culture. I'm using that loosely from what the stories I've heard and the information I've heard. I just, I, like, all these people died because this nigga was greedy. One man's greed cost the lives of hundreds of people. I really hope this nigga's in jail. Niggas had to clean up your mess. That's fucked up. That's really fucked up. That's really fucked up. That's really, really fucked up. Michael thought that he was going to die in there. It's like a Michael Simone. But on the 11th day of rescue, a rescuer stopped. He blinked. He scrambled, grabbed his flashlight from his back pocket, and flashed it into the hole. Hello? This nigga, Is anyone there? This nigga, Michael survived. And he put his ear up against the hole, and this tiny little voice says, I'm here. The other rescuers, they don't even believe him. So he's like, come, come, come. And they all make him say, I'm here again. And everyone starts swarming. I mean, 11 days in, they had to penetrate an extra four feet of thick reinforced concrete to get him out. He was out at 8.30 a.m., 230 hours after the collapse. Fuck. He was carried out on a stretcher oh, and he waved so for the cameras. Volunteer rescue workers, they're all cheering. They're all clapping. I mean, this was the victory that they needed. They're like, take the machines off. We're going back to hand. If Michael survived, there could be others. Meanwhile, Gia did not share this excitement. She thought she was going to die. For the past few days, the concrete on top of her face was coming closer and closer and closer. It was pure torture. The air was getting stuffier and she felt panic. The walls are literally closing in on her. But in the slowest way possible, she wanted to scream like, oh my God, just squish me already. Wait, she's the 25 year old? No. Oh. A different worker. Yeah. Oh, okay. Now, the anxiety of it about to come down was worse than just dying, she said. I mean, she was buried in a pile of concrete laying on her back. So her legs were trapped under a concrete pole. And she was thankfully in an air pocket, but she can't move. So at first, Gia is screaming her head off, hoping that people can hear her. She's like, hello, I'm here, I'm here. But nobody came. So she just said she kept falling asleep. That's all she could do. I don't know if her brain forced her to sleep. She just said... I kept falling asleep. I kept dreaming that I was home. I just wanted to go home. I respect that. And I kept thinking, oh my God, my dad is sick. My mom is worrying about me. And now I'm going to be even a bigger burden. You know, shout out to Jesus. 58 oh my God. Eight hours. You know, the people who really just ha literally are about to face death, just think about their family. That's amazing. That's very amazing. That goes to show like a lot of people are really good people, bro. Like, Niggas be like, damn, bro, why am I why am I dying? Why am I dying? I don't want to be a burden to my family. My dad's sick. Da da da. Nigga, nigga bro. When I was like recovering from my, my ankle surgery, I felt so bad. I felt so bad. Cause I couldn't help. I couldn't help with shit. I couldn't help with shit. I felt so bad. And I was at my grandma's house and I know she be needing help and everything. And I love to help my grandma. But I literally could not move. It was a it was a couple moments when I tried to get up and walk to help bring the groceries in. And it was like, bro, get the fuck in the bag. You can't be moving. I'm like, man, nigga, fuck that. Fuck my leg, bro. Damn. Like, this uh. Hours passed. So like two and a half days in. Remember the rule of three? Three minutes, three days without water. Three weeks without food. Mm -hmm. Two and a half days in, she's so thirsty. At this point, she can't even think about anything but her thirst. And water starts flowing. Oh, my God. And she takes a sip and she immediately coughs it out. Oof. She had rust water coming. Ah, fuck. She waited till more water came in. And instead of letting it flow directly into her mouth because it tasted so disgusting and rusty, she grabbed a piece of her clothing, soaked it in the water, and then just kind of wet her lips with it. Mm. She had no idea how many days had passed. All she knew was she was starting to hallucinate. The part where her legs felt were trapped, 
She felt like her legs were walking. She felt like her legs were floating at one point when it clearly wasn't. What? She was like losing her mind. She was losing sensation in her legs. She just kept going back to sleep. And then the next thing she knew, there's heavy machine sounds and the concrete's just getting closer and closer and closer. You know, uh, some people, when they talk about hallucination, they talk about it as if like it's a bad thing. But is hallucination like your brain trying to like ease you of the pain of what you're going through? I haven't really hallucinated off of like, say like, uh, like thirst and stuff like that. So I, I would, I would hope that's like your brain trying to like get you to be like, yo, it's, it's going to be all right, bro. Here's some water, my nigga. Hallucinate here. Boom. I don't know. Hmm. Would they push the concrete until it completely suffocated her? Would they push the concrete till it squished her? Like, what's going to happen? Would the excavator just come down and rip her up? Her bottom legs are stuck, so she'd be ripped in half. Gia felt terror. Sheer terror. She only had like 10 inches left. Jesus. When all of a sudden, she hears a voice. Stop, stop. Do you hear something? At around 2 p.m., on the 13th day, wow! a rescuer saw her foot and they yelled, if you're alive, move your feet. Gia tried to wiggle her toes, but she didn't even know if it was wiggling because she lost sensation a long time ago. Oh. And she screamed, save me. The rescuer clawed through the cement by hand and Gia just remembered thinking, ah, I'm found. She said it wasn't, ah, I lived. She didn't say it was, oh, I survived. She just thought, I'm found. Good. I don't care if I die right now. Because at least they found my body, so my mom will know. Oh. Her mom was later interviewed and asked, like, what, do you, what is the first thing you want to say to your daughter? And she said, do I even need to say anything? And they were trying to ask, like, did you think your daughter was dead? Because it had been 13 days. And they said, did you think she had? And her mom stops the journalist and says, no. I didn't think that. I'll never think that because the day she dies is the day I die. Mm -hmm. oh. This is so I I this is very sad, but like I, I kind of find some beauty in it because like I know that there's literally nothing more pure than the love your that your parents have for their kids. Like that shit can run that shit runs deep as hell. I like before that kind of like bounced off my ears like oh what what the fuck you mean when you when your daughter dies you die but like slowly I'm like okay I can under I can understand that even though I don't have kids I I I I can feel like okay I, I get it I get it after two and one day I might get it so shit um hundred and eighty five hours Gia was rescued and at that point the ceiling was so low it was touching her nose she was not even inches, but centimeters away from death. And everyone was like, okay, that's crazy, right? But there's no way there's going to be more survivors. There's only so many miracles that the universe can give Fuck us. Fuck it, find them. On the 15th day, Bruh. another woman is rescued. Two weeks. Let's call her Sammy. She was trapped in a small pocket of air in the children's clothing section. She heard the voice of her colleague screaming, help me. And she just kept screaming, panicking, help me, there's this concrete pinning my waist down. She was getting crushed. Mm. And there was no way Sammy could even get to her. And she tried telling her, it's okay, it's okay. But after a day or two, there was no more noise. Sammy said, you know, all she did was try and fall asleep. She had no idea how long she was in there. Sammy would be the last survivor found in the rubble. Mm. There would be no more miracles after that. Before we get to the depressing recovery, um, South Korea did try to bring up the morale of the country and the three survivors. So Michael, Gia, and Sammy almost became these beacons of hope for people. My bro, South Korea be going through some shit, bro. Oh my God. Michael was seen as this national hero for 
not only somehow miraculously surviving in the rubble for 11 days, but also his iconic wave on the stretcher. <sighs> Companies started offering him gigs to model for them. Schools were offering the three full ride scholarships. There had been this stereotype that the younger generation were weak and not as tough as their parents in South Korea, but this was completely obliterated. Oh, oh silver lining, huh? I don't know how I feel about that. I don't I I don't know how I feel about that to be honest. In in my opinion, that's kind of like companies capitalizing off of this tragedy, which kind of makes me itch. Actually not kind of, it does make me itch. But I mean, did it turn Michael's life around or these other two like what the fuck? This idea and just like Michael, Gia, the one who survived 13 days, she made headlines because when she was pulled out of there, reporters asked her while she was on the stretcher, how do you feel? Any plans now that you've been saved? And she said, I want... Why the fuck would you ask me that? Bitch, why the fuck would you ask me any plans that I was saved? I've been in this fucking rubble for 13 to 15 days. Nigga, get me to some clean water and some food. And a blanket. What the fuck? I want to go on a date with the oppa that rescued me. Oh. And people thought it was such an unhinged, hilarious, fun answer to such a serious, serious, depressing situation. And the last three survivors were asked, what food do you want to eat the most? Chipotle. Michael said, Coca-Cola. I want to drink an ice cold Coke. G Michael, what the fuck? I said iced coffee. Oh. Sammy said, I just want some ice cream. Every soda, iced coffee, ice cream brand went nuts trying to sign these three for brand endorsements. Hey, what the hell? Gia also kept making jokes. Like nobody knew if they could keep laughing or not. When she was rescued, she complained, Why'd you guys come so fast? I could have stayed there a few days longer. Let me go back in there. Michael had to have his head shaved to run some tests, and he was so embarrassed. Anytime reporters ran into his hospital room, he would put on his little beanie, his little hat. And I think that these are the stories that people wanted to focus on. Because the other side was just so dark. Yeah. Side note, um, almost all the rescues, especially the ones that weren't immediate, they were all subground level. So they were all in the basement. The other floors, I mean... This is a picture of what it looked like. There was no way that people were going to survive that collapse unless maybe you were on the roof, which probably not even then. Pongo, the magnet working on the restaurant floor of the fifth floor, he was rescued pretty early on. He, he had made it kind of basically out. I think he was hit by just some debris. And he said, every single person I spoke to that day, the head chef, my colleagues, customers, I would later see all their names written on the deceased list. Another survivor said, I just don't understand the point of life anymore. Like, the people that died, there were nice people. There were really rich people. There were workers like me. There were people who went to church. There were people who studied really hard. Yet everyone died without even a chance to fight for their lives. So what is the point of anything at all? That is a very interesting take. Um... If anybody in the comments has survivor's guilt or just anything of the sort, I would I I encourage you to share your story because it's very interesting when someone survives like a tragedy when it comes to this and they have like they're like, "Bro, why me? Why was I saved? Somebody here did everything right." But you chose but but I was chose. I was chosen. Why? I I do want I do want to talk to someone who has um gone through something like that and just like had like just survivor's guilt because you would think someone who has been saved would be like thank the Lord that you saved me. Fuck! I thought I was gonna die. But no, like they're like yo like why did you choose me you could somebody else literally could have gotten this that's very interesting to me families of victims said the nightmare was just never ending um i do want to say that the rescue efforts were admirable the rescuers they did everything but the system itself was flawed korea didn't have a strong system to respond to these types of crises 
which like I don't know if they still do with after Itaewon and Seoul, but mm. at the time it was so disorganized. Family had no idea if loved ones were alive, survived, deceased at a hospital, which hospital. Jesus Nobody Christ. Nobody had a clue. The site was left open for people to just come and that volunteer. That is terrifying. And so a lot of people did come and volunteer, but there were also a lot of hyenas. What do you think the hyenas did? What they do? They were dubbed hyenas by the media. What the fuck did About they do? About 400 hyenas were arrested during rescue efforts. Families are crying. Rescuers are risking oh their lives. God. They're stealing stuff? They're pretending to help and stealing designer goods. I should have known. I should have known. I should I should have known. Imagine you are a hyena, right? POV, you're a hyena. How in the fuck does your brain say like I'm I'm gonna make this very extreme. Say you find yourself a Valentino coat. It's covered in rubble, it's covered in dust, it's ashy. You don't even know it's Valentino, but you have an idea. You pick it up and you see a dead body right by this Valentino coat. How do you feel that you, or no, let's make it worse. Let's make it worse. Let's make it worse because I'm on, I'm on that mode right now. You have a Valentino, you are, you are about, you're in this rubble faking like you're about to save somebody and somebody's right there crying, begging for you to save their life. But there's a Valentino coat right over there. What type of terrible, decrepit, poor, piece of shit human being that you have to be to ignore somebody who is begging for help after a whole building collapses on top of them just to get a Valentino coat? Is designer really that much important to you that you can watch somebody die and ignore somebody die right beside you. And if that's the type of person you are. The only thing I got to say is God bless you. Because you're fucked up. You are very fucked up. There's blood on that Valentino coat. I really hope you happy. And I also hope that you have those nightmares of seeing that person. That has been begging for your for you to save them, but you wanted to save a coat instead than a human being. Of course, I'm being dramatic, but like I'm just trying to paint a picture of people going into some shit like this, just trying to steal just a, a thousand dollar coat. Listen, my nigga, I don't give a fuck how expensive some shit is. I don't care how you could flip it. I don't care how you can. I have expensive clothes in my closet. I'm gonna be honest. Having expensive shit. It's not all that cracks up. This is cracked up to be. I'm gonna be honest. I, I'm gonna keep it a stack because at the end of the day, it's just an article of whatever the fuck. This camera right here was like twenty five hundred dollars. It's expensive as hell, but at the same time, it's a camera. It's a fucking camera. I would never think that I would keep. I would try to save a camera, and there's somebody. Right there asking for me to save them. Like, I don't. Even though there's some people who have good morale, there's also a lot of people who are shit human beings. So that shit does not surprise me. Piece of shit. Wow. When one was arrested, they just callously responded, well, they were all going to go to the dump anyway. Another man was caught volunteering wearing 10 pairs of designer pants. 10 pairs. When asked, why the hell were you stealing 10 pairs of designer pants? He said, what are you talking about? I was saving lives and I got cold in the middle of June. So I just put on whatever was near me. I got cold in the middle of June. Meanwhile, Mr. Jung was at work when the building fell. 
He's an attorney, and he didn't hear about it until way later. He was at a uh, hushik with his coworkers, and they were drinking, they're eating, and he just had this pit in his stomach when people were like, "Oh, you didn't hear about the mall." So his wife and his three adult daughters, they loved going to that mall. So he calls his wife. She picks up, and he's like, "Oh my god, thank God! Okay, you're home, right? Are the girls home? Did you hear about what happened at the department store?" She's like, "What? No, the girls are there shopping." Oh, have fun. Mr. Jung's coworker said that he didn't even say anything. It, one minute he was on the phone, the next minute he was out the door. Hell he ran yeah. on foot to the department store. Hell yeah. And all he saw was rubble. He started climbing on the rubble in his suit, just clawing, looking for his girls. He went. Went to every single hospital in the city. He talked to nurses, doctors, looked at hospital morgues. The day after the collapse, he would be told that all three of his children were dead. And he's. said after what my wife and i went through that day i just hoped that the sky would fall and the earth would give out and we would just all die and of course he feels for every single daughter but he really felt for his eldest because she had fought and beaten all odds his eldest daughter went blind when she was 12 years old she worked harder than anyone he knew Harder than all of his adult coworker colleagues, attorneys combined, she ended up getting her master's in special education at UC Berkeley in the United States. She came back to teach special education at Solde, which is the best school in the entire country. And Holy shit, Berkeley! God damn. Her dad said she couldn't see in front of her, but she just always had a vision. I just, I just, come on, cut. Like, come on, cut. Like, how the fuck can you live with yourself and you realize just, like, you just want to cut corners and everything? I'll try to give you the benefit of the doubt. I shouted your bald, half bald ass out, and you just, you just let a nigga down, bro. Like, why do people always want to cut corners? Shit like this is like, this is why my coach, bro, this is why my coach told me never cut corners, dog. Of course, he ain't say, like, people could die from it, but, like, never cut. Why does it always got to be people who don't deserve to die that die? Why does it always got to be the hardworking people that end up dying? Why is it always the people... Bro, it's always the people that shouldn't die. <sighs> and she fought all these odds to be here, and now she's gone. There was another family, the Lee family, and Mom Lee, Mrs. Lee, she was telling her daughter for months, like, give up the dreams of the department store. And her daughter told her, no, if I'm going to be a fashion designer, I can't just rent a small shop anywhere. I have to make a big statement. I'm going to get foot traffic. This is, I know it's a lot of money, but I've saved up my entire life savings. I'm going to rent this tiny little shop. It's my dream. And she signed the lease two months before the collapse. And Mrs. Lee said all that nagging she did completely forgot about it because the minute that she saw her daughter in that shop, just how much passion she had for what she was doing, how could she not support her? She was at her shop when the building went down. And this part is so dark, but it feels really raw. 
a lot of families reported feeling shame and guilt afterwards because they were all there. And when survivors were being found, they would see survivors reunite with their families. And they said they would feel intense jealousy. I understand, bro. I really do. I'm not going to lie. I really understand. Like, as as much as I'm like, bro, jealousy is a disease, bitch. Get well soon. Da, 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 da. I understand. I really understand. I, I, I understand jealousy. Sometimes being jealous is valid. It's valid. It's really, really valid. And... It's natural. It's it, in that in this instance right there is natural. Like, cause at at you know like, yeah 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 your raw emotion when you when you literally just see you waiting you waiting at the TV to 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 find out that your that your son or daughter or your loved one is like going to be found and it's just the same it's just somebody different every single time. I understand that you're jealous, bro. In this case right here, I really hope you don't feel bad for feeling jealous. Because, like, you know what I'm saying? This is this is not your fault. This is just the fault of a bitch-ass businessman who want to cut corners and just be greedy. I just don't get it. I don't get it. Why the fuck are people so fucking greedy? Some people say that I'm greedy, but I don't think I am. I wouldn't do no shit like this. This shit not right. Because it's only human. And then immediately they would feel so ashamed. You for should, feeling so bro, jealous. you should not feel ashamed, dog. In terms of that, you should not feel ashamed, bro. You shouldn't feel ashamed. Bro, you have a right to want your kid back. That's your child. That's your loved one. You should have a right to have a feeling. You should have a right to a feeling. You shouldn't be ashamed of thinking something. You really shouldn't. You shouldn't be ashamed to think of something, especially if it's natural. In my opinion, it's 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 wrong if you act on it and you just lash out on it. You know what I'm saying? Thoughts. And all that shit, you shouldn't be, nigga, it's thoughts and everything. You can't really control that. Even though you probably could control your thoughts, but that's just a bunch of rewiring and shit like that. Nigga, I'm not even worried about that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't feel ashamed if you feel natural jealousy. Like, you shouldn't feel ashamed for that. Listen, it made them feel so gross. But they had this, like, ugh, that should be me. Yeah. So after the last remaining survivors were rescued, oh. the government decided they needed to start clearing out the debris. They said it was dangerous to just have it out in the open. So they just started moving the rubble to dump sites. And a lot of victims have not been found yet. So families were at dump sites by themselves, no rescue workers, digging through the rubble. At that point, some of them only found bones. And if there was any flesh, they were unrecognizable. This mall had been built six years ago. It wasn't even around for, I mean, you, you go and you look at houses in LA, there's houses from like 1920s still up for sale. So for it to collapse, injuring over 900 people, killing 502 people and resulting in 40 people that are still considered missing to this day, it doesn't make sense. The public is like, we want answers. It was revealed that the building was not attacked by North Korea or a group of terrorists. There was no earthquake, no natural disaster. The building went down on its own. So obviously there's some sort of human error. So they found the owner, the Lee family, and journalists start hounding him with questions. And look, the way that this man answers questions does not help him in the eyes of the public. They said, did you do a safety inspection on the building? Mr. Lee said, look here, we've got many people coming in and out of this building. Do you really like think about it? Do you really think if we knew that the building was going to go down, we would keep it open? Of course, we did safety checks. It was received by the president of the building. I am. 400, 500 people died. 500 people died and you show no fucking remorse and you're just talking about, oh, if we thought it was good. Yeah. 
the owner. I only attend meetings once a week. So you'd have to ask management to clear up those answers. In other words, we have no motive to keep the mall open if we knew it was going to collapse. But as a company, it's not just about injury to customers. It's about company property. He's comparing 502 people dying to losing a mall. Like, I think it's clear what he's trying to say. Like, of course, everything was great and we knew nothing about this because think about it. From our standpoint, would it be logical to ignore such a big safety concern if it would ruin? I'm actually like vibrating. I'm vibrating with anger right now. And I don't want to say anything that I'm going to regret. And I don't think I am. But like this, this sadness is about to turn to anger real soon. Ruin our company. But the delivery was disgusting and nobody believed him. He would also try to argue that if the building was so dangerous, why was he in building B when it collapsed? See, a lot of things that people say when it comes to shit like this really make me want to pull out a gun and shoot them in their fucking face. Because like at the end, of, like I'm going to be honest, bro, you can have whatever the fuck type of ego you have. But when it comes to a, a, a large amount of people dying at your hands because you did this, this, that, and the third, you, you're blaming management, which you've hired, and I'm pretty sure you have have signed off on it. I get you are a CEO or whatever, whatever the fuck, and you just attend meetings, but you have hella power, dude. You're the reason why this shit is up. You're the reason why this shit was built. You're the reason why this shit was changed. You were the reason why there's a fifth fucking floor when they told you there's no fifth, there shouldn't be a fifth fucking floor. You're a reason why all these people died. You're a reason why all these families are grieving. You're a reason why literally, you you are you're the reason for literally all this shit. And the best that you could say is, if you think we knew this was gonna happen, do you think we would? You think we would keep the? You think we would keep them all open? But this he survived. Building B did not collapse because. Building B oh. had sturdier columns because it wasn't a mall, so they didn't need to display merchandise. They didn't have all this heavy machine. There was like no one in there also. They didn't even have the massive AC units on the roof. And this whole argument backfired when it was revealed the reason that Mr. Lee was even in Building B to begin with was because there was an emergency meeting about whether or not the mall should be evacuated. That's what they were doing, debating whether or not to close the mall when the mall collapsed. The meeting lasted for hours and executives were arguing. So Lee and his son, who is the president of the mall, they were arguing that it's going to be bad for business. The board of executives were arguing it doesn't matter because if the building collapses or even if a ceiling falls through and a customer gets injured, that's going to be bad for business. Is 500 fucking people dying bad for business? I'm trying to figure out why are these people so stupid? Why are these motherfuckers so stupid? This is the shit that makes my fucking blood boil. Why are people so fucking stupid, bro? Fuck business. Fuck business. Fuck business. I really hope I'm in a situation where it comes to shit that I have to make a decision and I make the right fucking decision because there's no fucking way that people really just sit there and have a meeting for hours talking about, bro, we need to evacuate this fucking building. We need to evacuate this building. People are going to die. People are going to die. And I, and, and I, and I have the audacity to take out my mouth, to, to pull these words out of my mouth it's going to be bad for business if we evacuate. What business? Every business in this mall is fucked up, except for Building B. I'm trying to hold myself, bro. I really, I, I ain't got no more drink left. I'm drinking water now. I'm very, I'm very intoxicated right now. And I'm still trying to hold back on saying some wild ass shit because this, this isn't, this isn't, this isn't right. This isn't right. This isn't right. 
how do you have the audacity to say this and still keep the same thing, bro? Except what the fuck you did. You fucked up to a grandiose scale. 500 plus people's blood is on your hands. Just because you wanted to have them all. Just because you wanted to have them all. A few executives left mid-meeting because they got calls of complaints by store owners that like ceilings were crumbling. Literally during the meeting, they left. They went to investigate. They went onto the rooftop. One of the executives saw one of the columns punching through the roof. He turned to his colleague and said, get everyone out now. F Lee, I don't care. Get him out. Mm hmm. They were on the way downstairs when the building went down. Mm. The other executives and the Lee family were still arguing when all hell broke loose. People are sprinting towards exits. People were being pushed into clothing racks because now you could hear the groaning. Bro, I thought this was the actual footage. I was about to start flipping my shit. Oh my goodness gracious. I thought there was footage of this shit happening. Bro, the amount, oh my God. Like once that groaning hit, you had 20 seconds to get out. Some people were in their underwear just making a run for it. Jesus. They had been caught in the middle of changing. Now they're booking it. If Lee hadn't cut even more costs and had there been more escalators, more stairwells, more emergency exits, more people could have been saved. Because now there was almost a crowd crush situation on top of the collapse. Mm. A domino effect took over. The fifth floor ceiling fell through, and now it was on the fourth floor, holding the weight. But that was about to crumble, and then soon the third floor, and it would just all pancake in 20 seconds. Nobody had a warning. It looks like one of those um, aluminum soda cans that you step on. The executives in the Lee family heard. They ran out, ran to the hallway, and it's just a cliff. And they see the building on the ground. But still... Chairman Lee acts like he knew nothing. Okay, whenever he was interviewed by journalists, he would make it about himself. One journalist asked if he had anything he wanted to say to the victim's families, and he just said, do you think I wanted this to happen? I have nothing to say. What's crazy about all of this and this whole family is that Lee's daughter-in-law, so the president of the mall, his son's wife, uh -huh. was in the building when it was collapsed. She was rescued early on. She refused to give her name to rescuers. And people thought that was weird. The rescuers were like, what? Like, you don't want your family to know that you're okay? Mm -hmm. Everyone that could talk was giving their name so that your families can find you. Mm. But the very next day, they saw that same woman they rescued on the news, standing next to her husband and her father-in-law, showing her full support. Wow. So a full investigation on the cause of the collapse was ordered by the government, and it revealed a lot. I mean, obviously, it revealed all of the things that I've mentioned before. Mm -hmm. But on top of that, Chairman Lee was known to constantly change the interior of the mall, like he was just changing clothes. He would rip out perfectly acceptable lighter wood floors and put in super heavy marble flooring. He did not care about durability. He wanted it to look expensive because more people would come and they would shop and he would make more money. That's all he wanted, more money. He would knock down interior walls to, like, make more space for merchandise. And with all the new renovations, there were more customers. And it's not like the building crumbled out of nowhere. There were literal bright red warning signs that the Lee family and the executives, they were made aware of. Two months before the collapse, a thin line emerged on the ceiling of the fifth floor. It was more of an eyesore than anything, but every now and then... Tinkle, tinkle, there'd be dust landing on people's face. This is what is supposed to be expensive. This looks like shit. Dealing at the fifth floor. <clears throat> it was more of an eyesore than anything, but every now and then, 
Just tinkle, tinkle. Dust There'd be fall. dust landing on people's faces. Hey, bro. Coming from that crack. What the fuck? Like, that's kind of crazy. Yeah. If you were dining at the restaurants, your chopsticks would slowly roll to the side and off the table. What? Because the floor was tilting, but all the customers thought, oh, man, what's wrong with this table? The fuck? No one thought it was the floor. No one thought it was the building that was leaning. Workers on the restaurant level, they would put in a container of raw veggies on the fridge shelf. It's like an industrial walk-in fridge. They would walk back in and it's like slid all the way to the wall. Mm -hmm. They'd put it next to the door. It slid all the way down to the wall, like five feet down to the wall. Why would it be sliding? That didn't make any sense. Because this building is The floor of the fifth floor was tilted at a 15 degree angle. The tilting got so bad, the fifth floor restaurants had to be closed. They requested civil engineers to be called in for an inspection. And the main person that called was Lee's son. So he's there with the inspectors. And they're like, yeah, uh, this building is in imminent danger of collapse. The only option that you have in situations like this is to evacuate, close the entire building down, and we can game plan on what the next steps are. So they already know this before. Way before. Like yeah. two months before. And he's like, okay, okay, let me think about it. He didn't think about it. Instead, he hired workers to just hide the cracks by adding more grout and plaster. Can we send he's this like, as long as jump? the customers don't see. Because this month was crucial for them. June and July were the summer sale months. This is another illegal thing that they're doing. In South Korea, you can only have a sale for two weeks. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. I guess it's so that stores can't like try to manipulate you into like buying things right Mm. two weeks the sale is scheduled for july when everybody else has the sale but the lees were like we can be smart we're gonna get our vip clients early access so we're gonna sell them the product since they're our vips we know them and we're only gonna run their card at the sale prices in july but they can come during june Mm. and they had a lot of vips so june was a very busy high traffic month for them crazy busy 10 days before the collapse a customer was sitting at their table on the fifth floor to eat and the whole thing started shaking what she said it was so strange she thought it was an earthquake or something but when she told her friends that we're not the mall they were like what are you talking about there was no earthquake there was nothing on the news five days before the collapse another customer was on the fifth floor eating when it felt like someone doused a bucket of water on their head and she's like what the hell looks up there is like a droopy hole it's not even just a hole but like a part of the ceiling that's drooping down at the end there's a hole oh god the employees were made aware of it they tell upper management and they're like it's just sampung's shitty construction they did not think that water leaks were even in the same possibility as a building collapsing the night before the collapse the security guard noticed the sinkhole in the roof and he called lee's son and was like sir there's a literal sinkhole on the roof and apparently the son went himself to check it out and while he's standing there staring at this giant hole one of the managers of the restaurant comes out and is like hey i've been trying to call you for ages now look at this shit look at can i show you something they walk over to one of the columns on the fifth floor near his restaurant there's an eight inch long crack that's knuckle deep what but that's not even all the manager is like i've been waiting for this okay i'm paying all this money and look at that ceiling look at that ceiling above the kitchen it's droopy and look look he puts his phone on the counter like the cash register of the restaurant it slides off bro he's like i know it's not my counter so what's going on this building is fucked lee's son checks his watch he's like shoot the stores are about to open for the day Okay, just why don't we close down all the restaurants on this floor? Um, I guess if you want to stay open, you can stay open, but it's fine. Close down. We're going to figure it out. We'll send up maintenance or something. Maintenance workers were sent up and they're like, guys, this shit is going to go down. Like under no circumstances. can. How the fuck do you just keep giving these these warning signs and y'all niggas just be like, oh, no, let's keep it open. It's just like it's been like months of just warning signs. And you just push it to the side. We put plaster on anything anymore. Like, it's going to go down. <clears throat> Lee's son left the building for about 30 minutes before he was called back in. This time to the fourth floor. A shop owner said, I just heard these like really crazy like tuck, tuck, tuck noises. And then the whole floor shook for like three minutes. They're like, isn't that right, Susie? Like, three minutes. And Susie's like, yeah, three full minutes. Lee's son is like, okay, let me investigate, right? Before he could even figure it out, water starts pouring down the walls of the fifth floor. 
That's why they turned off the AC units. He said, you know what? Don't close them all. Turn off the AC units and drain the water inside of them because that's what's leaking. Bro. And then four hours before the collapse, evacuation orders were given. Lee's son said, let's focus on what matters. Don't tell the customers, but let's take out all the priceless goods. Paintings, artwork, jewelry, ancient pottery, super expensive bags. Let's take it out just in case. We don't know. Yo bitch ass going to hell. You going to hell. You going to hell. You are going to hell. It could flood. It could do something. Customers, employees, they were not evacuated. They had no idea they were in a compromised building. This is unbelievable. It's like the guy's doing everything in his power to kill people. Yeah. Why did they not evacuate? Because the mall was bringing in about $400,000 a day. So what? And they said, we can't lose out on that. Yes, you can. Many of the victims died on impact. Others suffocated to death. Others bled out. Some starved to death. And a lot of them drowned to death. When firefighters were trying to put out the fires inside the rubble, the water came in and filled their air pockets. Oh, my God. Some of the other survivors could hear them drowning. And the firefighters that worked that scene I don't think it's their fault. It's I not. think they did their best considering the information and tools they were given. Yeah, that's not it's not their fault. It's not their fault. Back to what I was saying earlier, it's not their fault. It's not their fault. It's not their fault. No. But they still have PTSD. They have nightmares mm. about it. They said they will carry around the guilt for the rest of their lives. In the end, the court sentenced Lee Jun, the chairman, to seven and a half years in prison, and his son got seven. You look what? so shocked, right? But this was actually a big deal. Th- this nigga killed 500 people and he just get seven years? He just get, se- he just get seven years, huh? Him and his son just get seven years, huh? This is what's even crazier about this case, okay? Is the fact that, to me, I'm like, seven years, that's nothing, right? In Korea, this was landmark. This was crazy that they got seven years. I mean, people, don't get me wrong, people were still upset it wasn't enough. But a lot, a lot of people being very cynical, skeptical, and just realistic, they weren't expecting the Lee family to get any jail time. Hmm. Not saying that they didn't deserve it, but that was the track record for the government. The reason why they got a lengthy jail time, lengthy quote, is really dark. It's a high-end department store. A lot of the victims were wives of influential businessmen. To just name a few, and not saying that these people's lives hold more value, but to give context on whose families were fighting for these offenders to get jail time, wife of Samsung Electronics president, wife of Teu Motors president. wife of the Samsung... uh, Division, electronics division. Oh, okay, okay. Holy, I was about to say, holy fuck. Yeah, advisor to Samsung Motors and former head of Korea's Custom Service, um, advisor to Samsung Engineering and Construction, executive for Hyundai Engineering and Construction, wives of high-powered attorneys, judges, and doctors, a judge's mother. I mean, these were just a... Bro, it's so fucked up how people just have to be connected for somebody to get actual repercussions for the bullshit that they did. And it's like, bro... These people literally just have names and they just have status. They bleed the same as these other people. They 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 shit and piss as the same as other people. Maybe they shit in a gold toilet or whatever the fuck. What the fuck does that matter? It's like, bro, it's crazy how like having power just like just absolves you or not absolves you. It's just like pushes justice on people who deserve to get justice regardless. And it makes me fucking sad, but I'm not in a sad state right now. I'm actually getting very angry. So, mm. few to name. Many of these were the <clears throat> upper echelon of society. These were the elites. And they still only got seven only got years. Seven. Yes. And the worst part is netizens speculate had this been a middle class mall or a lower class mall, they but, probably would have gotten no jail time. But why though? What? 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 How is that? Niggas got a five hundred, like five hundred people. I guess it was um a blame shifting game. So Lee's family would actually shift the blame on government workers that they bribed. So they would say, "Hey, we didn't pass our safety inspection, but just say we did." 
and about 30 government workers were fired and arrested as well so because there were so many people to blame it became this game of like who's really at fault was it the gatekeeper the government workers that didn't make sure that the safety inspections were up to date was it the yeah but i don't send I all of them to jail yeah. 500 people died i agree lee was 72 when he got out he died a year later Good. so we're not too sad about that uh, meanwhile, Lee's son, Jun, is one of the very few families in South Korea, uh, many we've talked about, that are basically socially exiled. Good. They're legally allowed to be in Korea, but he is said to have been spotted living in Russia. We don't know for sure, but like the minute he steps foot in South Korea, I mean, nothing's going to so happen. So he's still around right now. Yeah. But he's free. Yes, but and I think that he has no money. Really? I don't know if he had a lot of hidden money, but the family's fortune was completely liquidated and given to the survivors and victims' families. Good. It's estimated that each family received around um, 250000 because there's a lot of people, which honestly is nothing compared to the life of a loved one. Exactly. But trust me, this is not a story where victims' families get closure. 500 plus people died. Like, that's a tragedy that is going to be felt nationwide. I mean, think about the spider web of people that are either directly or indirectly impacted by this level of loss. Mm -hmm. Well, the president of South Korea was asked to say, say something to the victims. And he said, The collapse of the Sampung department store today was 21 days ago. I wish for peace for those who lost their precious lives. I pray for the speedy recovery and for those who were injured. And I express my condolences to the families who suffered an unexpected accident. Thank you. He's at his podium. Okay. He stands still for maybe two seconds and he thinks that the camera is off now. And he turns to his aide and says, that should be enough, right? 감사합니다. the fuck it wasn't even in the tone of like oh do you think i should say more like was ooh, was that um did i convey my emotions correctly it was like a like i did it happy let's go uh, yeah. uh, a lot of the victims families were upset at the government and even the rescue oper operations not the rescue workers but the I'm so happy them cameras was not was not off, bro. What's what's done in the dark will come to light, you fucking asshole. What the fuck, dude? Like, bro, I hope you feel like shit that that shit happened. You probably fired the cameraman. Shout out to that cameraman for keeping that motherfucking camera rolling because you need to need to expose these people for how they fucking feel for real. The operation. They felt like the government wanted to throw some money at the victims' families, start cleaning up the rubble, and make use of the land again. The victim's families requested a memorial. Um, not to give a comparison, but later on, this comparison does come up a lot in Korean media sources. But like 9-11 in the U.S., I mean, that is crazy real estate, if you think about it. That is prime real estate. But out of respect for the tragedy, there is a memorial there. You go there to you, you remember these families, you remember these victims, everyone that lost their lives. But the government said, this is such a good area of Gangnam. It's like center. Like every time someone drives through here, they're going to have to be reminded of that. And like, what about the real estate prices of all the people who spent so much money on condos? Um, This may not be a, a good idea, but why not make it like a memorial park or like a memorial like center, like where the main thing is the memorial of what's going on? Like... Is that not, is a memorial, like, just, like, do you, what the fuck are you going to do with this land? If that's, if that's wild to say, then please let me know. But I'm just trying to figure out, like, if the focus is a memorial, then build something around said memorial. And I'm thinking, you know, trees, grass, beautiful flowers that can commemorate the lives that were lost, that can show um, condolences and everything, have a place where people can will have graves you know how like at the vietnam memorial they have this big ass thing where it has the names of people have something where it can like become a fucking memorial and not just make it another place of real estate as if like there's this aura of death that is on this really whatever it's nearby it's gonna go down if we have a memorial here 
So they said, we'll give you a memorial. So the family said, okay, then can you give it to us at this park? That's a very famous park that people love to go to. And it's a beautiful park. We can go there and spend time with our loved ones. But that park is so pretty. People will be so depressed if they go there and they see 500 something names. What about in the woods? They literally get. You know what's interesting is that these people are talking about how other people will go to this memorial and feel sad as if they give a fuck about how people feel. But I'm sorry, Stephanie, again. Gave them a so people, um, so it's like, so y'all worried about how people feel when it comes to memorializing a tragedy where y'all didn't give a fuck about how people felt and the, the well-being of people. Make that make sense. You can't because that doesn't make any fucking sense. You see the lapse in judgment? I see it. How the fuck do you not see it? It doesn't make any fucking sense. Memorial in the middle of nowhere. Like just in the mountains. And they built a luxury apartment building. Where that, yeah. Some point department store? One of the victim's families was interviewed and sh the mom said, it's money, money, money. Building costs this money. Cleanup costs that money. Compensation costs money. Let's give money to the victims. Everything is about money and nothing is about my child. Mm. Remember Mr. Zhang, speaking of money, he lost three daughters in the collapse and his eldest daughter was the blind professor at Solde. Mm -hmm. He was compensated over $600,000 for the loss of all of his children, which is nothing. Mm. And he gave it all to this whole national school for the blind. Over the course of his life, he would donate more than $1.3 million to churches, schools, and charities that his daughter liked. And he would say, money to me is nothing that I can have. Mm. My daughters all had dreams to make the world a better place. And... I just have to fulfill those dreams before I go. Real nigga. He's real. And Gia, the one that survived 13 days, she said, I just hope people can learn from this. That no one should ever have a, eh, it won't happen to me. It doesn't concern me attitude. Mm -hmm. Because tragedy doesn't really pick people to happen to. It can happen to anyone. Exactly. It can happen to your child that waved goodbye to you before school. Or the husband that promised to be home for dinner. I never thought something like this would happen to me, but it did. And that is the story of this Hampung department store collapse. Honestly, what? What are your thoughts? Please leave it in the comments. And mm. yeah, it's crazy. It's just but fucked. Please stay safe. And I will see you guys on Wednesday for the main episode. Bye. This is fucked. This is this is so fucked. I'm gonna be honest. One thing I want to say is like, I don't. You know how like there's a saying that life is short. I don't think life is short. Life is more fragile, so we have to go through life carefully, but freely, and as you know, just just I don't. This shit is just, this shit is, this is sad. The crazy, the, the, like, one person's greed can cause this much death and despair and tragedy. And it's not, it's, 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 I don't, and it's always, it's always the recovery process and just, like, after that just makes this whole thing worse. Like, the president saying that shit and then just the camera still rolling. This guy's still building a five story. What? It's just, it's just, for what? Money? It's, it's fucking terrible, bro. I'm gonna be honest. But, um, yeah. Uh, what, what do y'all think? Let me know in the comments down below. Once again, my condolences goes out to the families of people who are lost and the people who helped. And my heart goes out to those souls who have lost their lives. They didn't deserve this. They didn't deserve none of this. This shit is sad, bro. I'm going to be honest. This shit is fucking sad because... God damn, bro. This 
Shit's 